How's it going everybody? It's Richard with Home Tech Video here with the second part of my Blue Iris Tools tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be covering the Watchdog Feature tab of Blue Iris Tools. Now again, this add-on was developed by Mike from IPCamTalk.com. A link in the description below is going to show you where you can go and download this amazing add-on for Blue Iris. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Starting at the very top, the Watchdog Program Monitor is going to detect whether or not Blue Iris is running on your machine. In the event that Blue Iris crashes out or it uh, gets detected as frozen or if, the, if it just freezes up but it's still running, uh, Blue Iris Tools will attempt to restart that program. So let me just show you really quick how this works. If I click on the Enable button, it's going to go ahead and start the Watchdog feature. And if you notice here, it will detect that Blue Iris is currently running on this system. So on this computer, I do not have Blue Iris running as a service. This means that if this computer restarted due to a Windows update or it crashed, Blue Iris would not automatically restart in this current setup. The nice thing about Blue Iris Tools is that it will detect whether or not it's running. If it detects that Blue Iris is not running on this computer, it will attempt to restart or relaunch Blue Iris. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to leave this how it is. Cancel out. Are you sure you want to close? Yes. And then very quickly, you'll see on the status window that Blue Iris is running. Once it detects that it's not, it says Blue Iris is not running and it's going to relaunch it. This is a pretty straightforward feature. It just detects whether or not Blue Iris is running on the computer. If it detects that it freezes or it closes out, it'll automatically launch it for you. Now the web server monitor pretty much does the same thing as the program monitor. However, it monitors the web server for Blue Iris. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the web server is, that is basically your UI3 layout. If you open up a browser and you want to see UI3, or if you want to view your cameras from a different remote location using Chrome or Internet Explorer, this is your web server. So Blue Iris tools can also monitor the web server in the event that it's not able to connect to the web server, it can trigger a watchdog command and send over a push notification to you. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that this option works. I'm gonna turn off the program monitor once again, I'm going to close out Blue Iris. And this time, instead of um, automatically restarting right away, it will attempt to reconnect to the web server a certain amount of preset times. Right now, I have this set as a maxed attempt of five. And right now, I got three attempts remaining. So it tries to do an attempt every few seconds. Now, this is as a failsafe for if the web server just freezes up for a second or if Blue Iris just skips um, and locks up just for a couple of seconds. It's not going to automatically try to restart it, even though it's running. So there, it reached its max attempts of five and went ahead and restarted Blue Iris. There, and now you see that it is detecting that the Blue Iris server is connected. Now moving along to the other parts of the Watchdog tab is the CPU monitor and the folder monitor. Now what the CPU monitor is going to do is just that. It's going to monitor your current CPU usage. If you have the overlay set up for this to be displayed from the weather overlay, uh, right here where it says uh, CPU usage, you need to have this feature turned on for it to display and report correctly. If you have this turned off, you're, gonna get a, you're not going to get any values here or it's, it's going to send uh, say NA. So make sure you have this turned on. To the right side here of the screen, you also can set up an alert. So if you have a processor that is prone to memory leaks, which means that the CPU usage slowly creeps up over time, you can have it send you an alert if this happens. So um, again, I'm gonna show you how to set this up once I set up the alerts section of this. Right below that is the folder monitor. Now there's currently not any options that you can check within the folder monitor. You can just either have this enabled or disabled. If you have it enabled, then you're gonna get reportings if you are gonna use the Blue Iris Cloud feature. So if you have multiple locations set up, you can have it um, basically have access to knowing how full the hard drive is getting and how much storage is being used. All right, so now that you know what each of these features do for you, let's go ahead and set up alerts to send a notification to your phone in the event that something happens. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can set up either email alerts, which is configured under the options button. So you'd enter in your um, email settings here, or you can do what I personally like using is the using pushover. 
Now you have to have a pushover account created in order for this feature to work. So let's go ahead and create an account and I'm going to show you how this works and what it looks like when it comes through to your phone. So to create a pushover account, you'll just open up a browser. I'm going to use Chrome and then we're going to go to www.pushover.net and in the top right corner, log in or sign up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create an account real quick. I, I do have an account created already, but I'm going to just walk you through the account creation process. So in my email address, I'm going to go and use, let's use this account. Uh, create a password. And it's as easy as that. Now my account has been created. Now once you have your account created, you are going to need to go ahead and verify that email address. So it's gonna send you a notification, kind of like a standard account creation process. So you go in there and I'm gonna verify my email address right now. I have it opened up on my phone and I'm clicking the link verify now. And now it says, thank you, your account's been verified. So if I refresh this page, hopefully, there we go. Now the notification's gone. Now that you have your account created, you want to take this user key and put this into Blue Iris Tools. So we're going to copy this, open up Blue Iris Tools, go to the Enable Pushover Notifications, click on the little icon, and we're going to paste this in your user key, which is going to be right here. So now that that's done, the last step we need to do is create an application API token uh, key, which is going to go in this top box. So uh, close onto this. And we're going to click under here where it says your applications. We're going to create an application API token. Now, when you first set up Pushover, it's going to say that it has a seven day trial. And then after seven days, you need to register it. As long as you're creating it this way and you stay under 7,500 messages, Pushover is going to be free. So let's go ahead and create our application. We're going to call this Blue Iris. Uh, the description and the URL, URL are optional. Now the icon's pretty cool. You can choose a custom icon to come through to your phone to know what type of application is sending you a push notification. So let's go ahead and do this now. We're gonna choose a file and I'm gonna be using a logo for Blue Iris. And then lastly, click on the little box saying that you agree to their terms and conditions and then create application. Once that application is created, you're gonna take this code, which is your API token. We're gonna copy it. Go back into Blue Iris Tools and paste this on the top part. And then that's it. You're done with this part of it. So the last thing you want to do is configure Pushover on your Android or your iPhone. All right, so now that we have Pushover configured on Blue Iris Tools, we're going to go into the app. I'm going to be using an Android phone that I've downloaded Pushover on. We're going to log into my account. And the first thing it's going to ask you to do is name this device. So we're just going to leave it the same, Galaxy S8, add it in. And Pushover is now set up on this device. Now, if you notice on my screen here also, it says that this is now enabled to receive notica notifications for your seven-day trial. Uh, and your seven-day trial has been started. Now, as long as you stay under 7,500 notifications in a month, Pushover is completely free. So you can ignore this warning message here about the seven-day free trial. So now let's go ahead and go into the CPU monitor on Blue Iris Tools. Uh, my CPU usage right now is hovering around 50 to 55%. Let's go and activate an alert. And let's just change this to, if it goes above uh, 45%. It's gonna send me a notification. So let's go ahead and enable it. After 10 seconds of going above 45%, I should get a notification to this phone. So let me go into like a different application here. There, it says push over sent. There it is, came through as a push notification. So I can click on it, open it up, and it shows CPU load was 55.3, exceeded 45 second, uh, 45% for 10 seconds. So the last thing that I wanna show is the options that you can change down here at the bottom right for the watchdog alerts. You can set the amount of time between alerts that were, would be sent to your phone. So by default, it's set to five minutes. And you can also set the maximum amount of alerts that can be set in one hour, sent in one hour, which is again defaulted to five. 
The number right below that just shows you how many more alerts can be sent during this hour, which is two, because I've already sent a couple of push notifications to my phone. You also have three other options down here at the bottom. Launch URL is handy if you use home automation with your system. You can send a rep request to that home automation system. Play sound is going to play a audio clip through your computer running Blue Iris. And then close Blue Iris before opening is handy if your CPU is spiked at 100% and Blue Iris is lagging and won't shut down. So it basically force closes Blue Iris before starting or attempting to restart it. So that pretty much wraps it up with the watchdog feature of Blue Iris Tools. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching.